Well, heart failure is, is really many things. It's really, it's the end stage of many other diseases. So you could have a heart attack, you know, when you're in your thirties and survive that and then have reasonable function for years and then eventually have worsening heart function as scar builds up in the heart. You could have a severe valvular lesion like aortic stenosis and have heart failure from that and then the heart failure can improve when you replace the valve. And some patients get heart failure from um, much less obvious things like a viral infection or they have a family history of heart disease, they have a gene that predisposes them to heart failure. And, and those are a little bit less obvious um, to diagnose in many cases, but it, it can be the end result of many different conditions and diseases. It's an area of, of growth in cardiology and it's not a single disease, it's really the end stage of many diseases. And um, my colleagues in cardiology and other areas have done so well at keeping patients from dying of heart attacks, stro um, uh, arrhythmias and things like that, and valvular disease that they've continued to survive these events, but then eventually they do succumb to, to having heart failure or pump failure um, later in life. And so it's really a growth area. There's more than 5 million Americans with heart failure right now. And, um, and that number's continuing to go up as the, as the um, population increases. So, so it's nice that this, the um, condition increases in number that the treatments are also increasing and we've had a couple leap forwards in heart failure therapy in, um, in the last several years. In the last really two years we've had two new drugs come to market to treat a specific kind of heart failure, um, heart failure with reduced ejection fraction and then the um, advanced heart failure world which is a which is an arena that I work in significantly, has seen uh, the evolution and growth of the ventricular assist device, which has um, become increasingly more used in patients with advanced heart failure or end stage heart failure, either to assist with you know, keeping the patient alive while they're waiting for a heart transplant, or in some cases, instead of a heart transplant. I think because there's so many heart failure patients, they by necessity they're treated in many different areas and you know I was the only heart failure specialist here at UC Davis for the first five years of my career here um, and I would argue that it would be impossible for me to treat every single heart failure patient in the system so I think that one of the areas that I've worked in is actually teaching others to treat heart failure and you know, we did a pilot program where we had a nurse uh, who was heart failure trained working at the primary care level um, to um, help the primary care doctors recognize um, problems and how to treat heart failure um, and how to interact with the cardiologist as needed. Um, I think the general cardiologist, any general cardiologist you talk to, not a heart failure specialist, will tell you that there is a pretty good proportion of their patients that have heart failure. People like me who carry the American Board of Internal Medicine board designation of advanced heart failure, adv advanced heart transplant, many people focus only on patients in the end stages of heart failure, which is really less than 5% of the heart failure population. I, I balance my time between patients who are end stage, but also patients who are not. And um, so uh, that's a, I wouldn't say it's a unique aspect of my practice, but it is, it is sort of the way my practice is, is, is developed. So I think that with a projected, you know, 30 million heart failure patients coming up in, you know, in the upcoming decades, I don't think that it's going to be possible for heart failure specialists to be the only people that are taking care of these patients. Heart failure is a chronic disease. It's a very morbid disease. If you have heart failure, if you're diagnosed today, and this is a commonly cited statistic, your chances of being alive in five years are roughly 50%. And so that's worse than a lot of cancers that we take care of. So I think that that's not new. What's new is you know probably a little bit more public awareness about that fact. Um, especially now with new therapies, you're seeing more direct to consumer advertising. And um, <laughs> there's been one company in particular has recently done a lot of direct to consumer advertising, which has raised awareness about heart failure in general being something that people should, should really be thinking about as, as something to be concerned about. Some people have, oh, I just have a little heart failure, you know, and they might say that, but if you tell them they have, you know, the C word, it's, it's much more um, emotional. So I think that 
it it doesn't always carry the same emotional weight as cancer, but it's definitely um, very um, morbid. Patients spend a lot of time in the hospital um, with heart failure, and it's the number one one of the number one diagnoses that patients are discharged with from the hospital. Often patients with heart failure have other conditions such as diabetes or arrhythmias and even cancer, kidney disease that also contribute to, to illness as well.